So what is an intravenous guanethidine block? Um, well, an intravenous guanethidine block is a type of minimally invasive pain management procedure. Um, these are procedures which are used for patients who have um, a very unpleasant condition which is called uh, CRPS or Complex Regional Pain Syndrome. Uh, in the old days it's been referred to as other things, RSD, um, Sudex atrophy and a number of other things but the, the modern uh, naming is CRPS, Complex Regional Pain Syndrome. Now, um, if a patient has uh, CRPS affecting their upper limb, their arm or their lower limb, their leg, um, there is this procedure, the intravenous guanethidine block, which if they're failing to improve with medication or they're getting a lot of side effects with medication, is a treatment option. Now, it was certainly in vogue some years ago. Uh, evidence has come out to say it may be less effective, but with all pain treatments, um, there is no doubt that there are some patients who, for whatever reason, respond extremely well to a specific type of treatment. So whilst the evidence may say they're not particularly helpful, there are most certainly individual patients who have had intravenous guanethidine blocks uh, who find them to be particularly helpful, and they may be helpful for several months uh, and uh, do extremely well. Now the procedure is relatively straightforward. Um, the patient will come in um, and essentially uh, small cannulas are put, if we discuss the upper limbs easier, um, a cannula, little needle, is put in the back of both hands. Um, one is for safety and one is in the side where the affected limb. Um, and essentially what's done is a cuff is put um, on the arm it's referred to as a double cuff. It has two, two inflatable cuffs in it. And uh, we use a, either a bandage or a roller to actually essentially squeeze out all the blood, squeeze out all the fluid from the arm above the tourniquet. And then the top tourniquet is inflated to a uh, high pressure. And what that does is it stops the blood going in and out of the arm. So it, it's causing a, a block, essentially. Once that's been done, uh, into the affected side in that cannula uh, will be injected some guanethidine. Um, guanethidine is a medication. It's an intravenously used uh, medication. It's referred to as a sympatholytic. Um, which means it, it, will, it will reduce the sympathetic activity in nerves and that can be injected, so that's injected slowly. It's often uh, mixed up with a long-acting local anaesthetic preparation, for example, prilocaine, um, and sometimes we use other uh, agents, uh, common ones these days being Ketorolac, which is an intravenous anti-inflammatory medication. So these three medications, two or one medication, whatever is selected, are essentially very slowly, carefully injected into this uh, arm, which is now essentially blocked by the tourniquet. What happens? Well, um, the vein in which the medication is injected, um, veins and arteries and nerves tend to run around the body uh, a bit like electrical wiring together um, all over the body. So where the, where the veins are, there's going to be arteries nearby, there's going to be ner nerves nearby. Now because we have the tourniquet on, once that preparation, that intravenous preparation has been injected, it has got, it's got nowhere to go because the blood's not actually moving from the arm. So it will sit in the vein but then it will diffuse, it will, it will move through the wall of the vein and it will start to have uh, an effect on the nerve which is adjacent uh, to essentially block it uh, or block the sympathetic activity. The tourniquet is kept on for a minimum of 20 to 30 minutes, sometimes longer, um, and that allows the medications to essentially fix uh, onto the nerves and have their beneficial effect. 
The reason for the double cuff is that it can be uncomfortable to have a very tight cuff on the arm. And so after a few minutes, the bottom cuff uh, is uh, inflated and then the top cuff uh, is deflated and that keeps the what we call stasis in the arm, but it's a, a more comfortable, uh, makes it a more comfortable procedure. In terms of risks and benefits, the benefits of the procedure are pain relief, um, the risks, failure, local bleeding, bruising, infection, discomfort. The main discomfort does tend to come from the tourniquet and in some cases where patients find the procedure useful um, but find it very unpleasant, it may be necessary to sedate a patient in order to do uh, the procedure. We do try and avoid that where possible so it can be an outpatient procedure and it's more easy for a patient to finish the treatment and go home, for example. There are lots of other potential theoretical uh, uh, adverse effects with the procedure. Those tend to be the main ones. Um, as with all procedures, uh, if patients are going to undergo a procedure, we will always uh, discuss the procedure with them. What are the indications for it? What are the benefits of it? What are the adverse effects of it? And once that's discussion, that, once that discussion has taken place, um, we will uh, do the consenting process and do informed consent of the procedure.